Hi everybody! So far we have been digging for uranium, enriched it in fissile uranium-235, produced nuclear fuel out of it and used this fuel in a nuclear reactor. My name is Stefan van Winkel and I will tell you about the next stages in the nuclear fuel cycle. I will discuss how to responsibly deal with the spent fuel, the fuel after irradiation, from the cooling pool to the interim storage and from conditioning to the final geological disposal. Let's look again at the information about the quantities in differ of the different constituents of a typical spent fuel. Having started with 1000 kg uranium in the fresh fuel, we have still got 950 kg uranium left in the spent fuel. Through neutron capture, 11 kg has been transformed into mainly plutonium plus some minor actinides. 39 kg fuel underwent fission, resulting in the fission products. You might remember the curve of the fission yields from a lecture in the first week. Well, the quantities of different fission products reflect this figure perfectly. With 16 kg lighter fission products and 23 kg heavier fission products. Many of these fission products are radioactive and so decaying faster or slower depending on the respective half-lives. The characteristics of the spent nuclear fuel define how we can deal with it in a safe and responsible way. Spent fuel still contains fissile material, so we have to store it in a configuration that guarantees a subcritical system. That is why the spent nuclear fuel is stored in special racks with eventually the use of neutron absorbers, for example boron-10. The spent nuclear fuel is highly radioactive, so we have to shield it. And the decay heat makes the spent nuclear fuel hot, so we have to store it in a cooling pool. A typical cooling pool is about 12 meters deep, so that the spent nuclear fuel is 8 meters below surface. The water functions as radiation shield and as coolant. A water cooling circuit keeps the pool temperature typically below 35 degrees Celsius. Water level and temperature are carefully monitored and hydrogen detectors near the pool check for radiolysis of the water. Spent nuclear fuel normally remains in a cooling pool for several years. Some countries like Sweden and Slovakia, they keep spent nuclear fuel in such wet, wet storage conditions. Other countries put the spent nuclear fuel after sufficient wet cooling in dry storage containers. Whole spent nuclear fuel assemblies are placed in a welded or bolted canister under inert atmosphere. The canister is placed in a storage cask or in a transportation cask or in a dual purpose cask, combining both purposes. Dry storage can be vertical or horizontal, can be outdoors or indoors, at the reactor site or at centralized locations. Surface storage is a temporary solution, which cannot replace the need for a geological repository. Before final disposal, the spent nuclear fuel will need to be conditioned. This means it has to be repackaged in a disposal container. Such disposal containers should be corrosion resistant, withstand internal and external pressures, and be heat conducting, so it can act as a safety barrier. The goal of the final disposal is to isolate radioactive waste from the environment through a series of engineered and natural barriers. In the case of spent nuclear fuel, you have the fuel pellet as a waste form inside the cladding, the fuel pins as assemblies inside the canister, the canister surrounded by absorbing backfill material, and all this in a geologically very stable host truck deeply underground. Different countries have got different geological conditions, so different host rocks are being studied for their repository properties. For example, hard rock in Sweden and Finland, volcanic rock in the USA, salt rock in Germany and the USA, and clay in France, Belgium and Switzerland. The choices of the best canister and backfill materials depend very much on the site-specific host rock conditions. Safety studies include the scenario that in the long term, groundwater might finally reach the spent nuclear fuel, despite all barriers. 
for the consequences this might have on the fuel matrix, we have to look back at lecture 4.2. You might remember from that lecture that the solubility of uranium-4 is much lower than the solubility of uranium-6, meaning that reducing conditions and low values for EH and dissolved oxygen in water are favorable for limiting the dissolution of the uranium matrix in spent nuclear fuel. In the long term, all short-lived radionuclides have decayed to stable nuclides, and only the long-lived radionuclides will remain. For spent nuclear fuel, the most important remaining radioactive nuclides after 1,000 years in the geological disposal site are the actinides, such as plutonium-239 and plutonium-240. The fission products, like technetium-99 and cesium-135, and activation products, like carbon-14 and chlorine-36. Scenario studies have shown that the most problematic nuclides of this list are cesium, iodine and chlorine due to their high mobility. If you now think that we have finished with the nuclear fuel cycle, I'm sorry, but you're mistaken. There exist alternative ways to deal with spent nuclear fuel. Check it out in our next video.